Father God, whiten our minds and the yearnings of our hearts. For your living ways are all we seek. Strengthen our lives and inspire our spirits. In your living waters flow endless grace. Lord, grant to us the peace and the love to endure the hardships of this world. Lead us, O kindly deed, for in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. In our call to worship this morning, Jesus reminds us that he is the eternal life. In John chapter 6, verses 53 to 55, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink he have no life in you. Whatsoever ye eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. What a wonderful, what wonderful reassurances to begin with this special service, worship service, to celebrate World Communion Day. And as we come together as one big family and being God's children, I greet you in the Son, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. John Wesley once said, we do not have to think alike to love alike. What is unique about this church is that we can express our love for the Christ in the ways we know and understand best, in languages, in songs, in prayers, in the way we have our communion, and in sharing the word of God. The special worship will be bilingual. It will be in Fijian. I'm sorry for those people that don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> and it will be in English. And uh, we pray that this service will be blessed by the Almighty God, and that he will bestow to us the peace and the tranquility that surpasses man's understanding. Let us continue to praise God in our opening hymn, number 203 in the hymnal, and 322 in the Fijian hymn book. And uh, the Fijian choirs will sing in Fijian, and the English choir will sing in English. What a glorious opening. <laughs> so I invite you to raise, and uh, as, you, as you may, and let's praise the Lord in sounds of, of joy.
us pray. To our majesty, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, we acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit in our midst this afternoon. Because your word says, where two or three are gathered in my name, you are there in their midst. Father, we are more than two or three. We are abundant this morning to come and sit in the house of the Lord to worship and to acknowledge your presence and to thank you and to thank you and to thank you, Father, for everything. We commit this service into your hands, Father, to be our leader, to let us know what you want us to do, to help us, Lord, fill us with the love, the love that you showed us on the cross in Calvary when you died to save us from our sins. That same love, Father, fill us, fill our spirits, fill our souls as we go out from here into the world to do likewise as you did to us. We cannot do it without the power of the Holy Spirit. And we acknowledge your presence and we just thank you and we pray that you'll guide us and lead us according to your will. We thank you, Lord, for the leaders of the church and what they came out with for us to have our community service today, where all of us to join together as one to worship you and to lift your name up high. We also acknowledge that we, Father, we, sin we have sinned. We have sinned against you. We have sinned against one another. We ask for your forgiveness this moment, Lord as we continue with the service today, so that we be cleansed and we continue to worship you and to glorify you, so that you will look at us, Father, and just see how happy and glorious it is to worship in the house of the Lord when there's every, all our iniquities have been taken away from us. And we just thank you, Lord, for the, your son, Jesus Christ, for dying on the cross that we are able to be here glorifying you and looking forward to going and joining you up in eternal life, the press in your presence, in the place you have prepared for those who have faith in you. Tamiki Mambakaloma Lang, Kimbabi de Vinaka Vikim Nina Singila Vindai, Kimbabi de Vinaka Takana Colonelo Tambo in Dambi Maliwe Kimamino singing Nikua, the name Meso Colonel singing Nikua. Father, we thank you again for today. We thank you for all the, everything that we will be having today, the hymns that we'll be praising you with, the Bible reading, the scripture reading, the, the, the spoken words, especially, Lord, the message from you. Anoint your anointed, Lord, and fill him with your Holy Spirit so that whatever we will be told, that we will be obedient to it, Lord, and go out and live likewise. We pray and ask all this in no other name but in the mighty name of Jesus, who is our Lord and our Savior. And he taught us to pray together by praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen.
next hymn is uh, 377 on the hymnal. Is that right, Al? That's right. Uh, our, our number 377, we're going to sing verses 1, 3, and 4 from our hymnal. And in the Fijian hymn book, it's uh, hymn number 65. And uh, this is why this church is so unique, because the choirs can sing together in their own languages. Why don't we give them a big hand? <laughs> oh, God. reading from the Gospel of Luke 19. He entered Jericho and was passing through, and there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not, on account of the crowd, because he was small of stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, he has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. 
for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Thanks be to God. The last uh, chapter of Psalms and the last verse, it says, let everything that has bread, praise God, praise the Lord. Uh, it's so right and fitting that uh, I quote that one as we gather today for the World Communion <coughs> Celebration. And I believe this is the third time that we get together for such an occasion. And uh, a special welcome to all your good friends, brothers and sisters in the Lord, who have come from afar or even near to be with us in this church service this morning. And a special welcome to, to Pastor Blake and uh, Lindsay, who, who would be uh, uh, sharing with us the living word. And we look forward to partaking from the uh, uh, flesh or, and the blood of our Lord Jesus. We came in Wakanda, now speaking in tongues. We came in Wakanda, Ningole to my niece, Sokolo, what they came in, and I sing a living co, Sakamaru, Taki, Katali, Taki, Nanumni Rani Tikura, when the my father there and a clue live not man. Danuita Wata, Ninda Nasuka, Talcato, and Nono Valley. And a single level in the We hope that uh, uh, we'll all go back from God's house uh, satisfied with the word that uh, uh, He has prepared for us today. <coughs>
pastors, our entire congregation. We welcome and appreciate this opportunity to share our worship with you this morning. We accept your invitation and praise the Lord on this World Communion Sunday. Thank you. has given us a lot of talent in our music directors and our talented singers. Praise God. Amen. The next uh, will be announcements, if there are urgent announcements to be made. Uh, <laughs> Doug and uh, Epi. <sighs> Thank you, Ismaili, for those kind words and certainly echo the sentiments of many of us when we have the honor to work with so many gifted people. It's a great pleasure for us directors to uh, be surrounded by you, all of you. Thank you so much for that time together here. I, am a, I do have a couple things. Our prayer cards, please take a moment and consider submitting your prayer as an insert. I have three inserts. Do you have three inserts? What? Can you not hear me? Michael. 
I have three inserts. That's what I'm shooting for anyway right now. And uh, can you hear me better? But I want to make sure you get uh, the prayer card out first. It's, it's World Communion Sunday. We have a lot to pray about. So please feel free to fill those out and put them in the offering plate or hand them to the pastors, the ushers. We'll make sure they get moved on forward. Also, too, as we prepare for offering, all the Methodist churches in the world have this envelope this morning. We all have this envelope. This is our World Communion Sunday offering envelope. And it's simply to encourage the studies international and national of students around the world who, want, who have a heart for Christ. If you'd like to support students around the world who have a heart for Christ, consider giving in World Communion Sunday today in your offering. And then as we know, those of us that um, are a regular part of our church life know that we're in the middle of our love and serve your city theme. And the serve part of the theme this fall changes regularly. We had a chance this morning, for example, to hear Margie Pettibone, who you heard just a moment ago, speak to us about Catholic Charities. Catholic Charities is an ongoing series of tours. Those are listed in your bulletin each week. And the other activities that are coming up, especially near to us in the next few weeks, are listed on the pink form here, the pink card. A chance for a conversation on global refugee crisis. Heavens, I can't think of a more current international story right now. We've certainly been aware of it in a lot of ways, and we're going to talk about that on Sunday the 18th. You can see that in there. And then as we move to the following Sunday, we get a chance to learn more about what it means to be in ministry to our Latin Hispanic brothers and sisters in this town. And we'd like to urge you to consider Walk with the People as an activity to serve this city on Saturday the 24th. And lastly, on Sunday the 25th, we're going to bless our animals, all critters great and small, on leashes. And if you're not comfortable with your critter in a big scene, bring a picture and we'll bless your picture. <laughs> We'd love to see all of you out there on Sunday the 25th. The Harvest Festival is coming up. There's more things happening in the church's life. I hope you'll take time to read it. It's my pleasure now to uh, introduce Epi to tell us more about what's going on in the life of the church, Epi. Our Fijian language ministry announcement in Fijian. Na vika songa meka deva kisa chiku vika nda na keni la bla bla na singa tambo na mada mengo na nonda suli kisa chiku sanguru vika nda na kena ibuluili na nonda vika nga na numina masu masu kisa chiku sanguru vika nda na nonda Bible study nga na tiku buti nga nombo ni moniti na baite kisa chiku na turang na tal tal pastor Blake ya na nombo ni moniti nombo ni barombu kana nonda tu nga unanga na matibito kani. Nonanda masuk saya menangkar lebih satu dengan anda baruai main awon okina awon okina nama tali layar tu nanti kemudian cuma nak koros senai nabi awon koros kalili tiada koros kalau awon koros seoni tu nengai wajah baru saya tiada awon koros kedisemani nanda lutut awak batang anda lengan kerabu cikgu Trinity ya yang singa tambu yang nama dah minggu nanda basi sana kelas satu dengan nanda maten bulu lutu yang tiada kalau kau yang nama tak. Nanda ambos ibu lembu nangka ingkar rabi tu ngan nyuwiti nampak single lembu, nangka rabi saya tiko naol nanti single lembu diintai. Nanda bubble study ngan tu korot tiket tiko nanti tiko saya tiko nai viewa, ya nembong ini moniti. Saya tiko saya kena na turang abu lutaki, saya tiko nai tal tal ni saya tiko nai bapa kosu tu dah kemu kedepan nabi kasu mak kedepaki, saya bawa saya tiko nai kena lembu. Sanda angkar rabi nak keluar nampak sulit ada spray, kima mi bawa bini bina awal lembu kemuni ena. Single level ini dai. Bawa bini bina awal level ni kira ambil lutut dengan bata sangat tiga na single level ni kuah. Sama sulit lagi sangat tiga na non rombulan na turangan na tal tal. Pasta lain siapa kena be pasta Blake. Kira ambil bawa bini bina tiga tiga na non rombula. Ena single level ini dai. Bawa kira ambil na single level ni kuah na sokolunggu sa tambor be kira muni. Bawa kira ambil kasus sa mek kedua ke sa kerja muni na. Bawa kira ambil kira na single level ini dai. Kira ambil ngai masuk sangat dai. Tanda dalam ni cisu ni ambil turangan. Kau yang bulan di nanti untuk apa? Amin. Nampaknya saya akan berbazar dengan saya. Saya call the steward up for the offering, please. Thank you.
I invite you to rise as you may for this anthem. Thank you. commend to you the offering that we have given you this afternoon for the betterment and the building of your church and for the wider spread of the gospel of your work. Bless the stewards and bless us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Will we rise as we may? And uh, hymn number 64 in the Fijian language. Let's, uh, 64. First four verses. First four verses. <laughs>
So grateful for our time to be together today in this, uh, in this setting, especially grateful for the uh, Fijian language uh, ministry folks who have uh, prepared the order of service for us, and uh, we are following what we normally do at 1230 around here uh, on Sunday mornings. I don't know how many of you have made it to one of those services, but uh, uh, this is kind of the order we go through. A cappella, though, we added some, some music to that, but uh, it's always a great time to be together. Um, on these occasions. So welcome again to everyone, and we're grateful that we can share in this World Communion Sunday together. Uh, grateful to those of you who are out at Stony Point this morning doing some uh, work out there. Uh, grateful to those of you who went over to the park uh, today from here, and the rest of you that were here with us, uh, with uh, Margie and, and Catholic Charities this morning, talking about uh, our connection and different ways in which we're seeking to love and serve our city, and now together today at this time to share in World Communion Sunday celebration. I was thinking uh, yesterday, you know, we kind of started our ecumenical celebration yesterday. Uh, we had uh, Bob Ryan's memorial service, and Bob's uh, family, we had, a, uh, we had um, a United Methodist pastor who's a, step, who's a, a stepson who was in the service. We had a niece who was a Lutheran pastor, ELCA, we had another niece who was the director of Christian education for a Roman Catholic parish. We had another relative who was uh, a deacon in the Episcopal Church. And then we had a, a spouse who wasn't here who was a UCC pastor. That's part of Bob's family. And so kind of yesterday, we kind of had our World Communion, <laughs> our World Communion celebration and celebration of Bob's life. How, how fitting can, uh, can that be? What a, what a wonderful tribute and celebration and gratefulness to, to his life uh, as well. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we come together today and as we reflect on this scripture and share in Holy Communion, indeed we are open. We're open to you, your spirit, your grace, your word, your presence. Shape us, form us, guide us, allow us to be all you want us to be. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are in, as you know, well know, aware, uh, a series about loving and serving our city. And I kind of think of this series kind of like breathing. Right? So I'd like you just to take a breath in and take a breath out. And take a breath in and take a breath out. We love and we serve. We love and we serve. And so much of our Christian life is, sim is simply getting in that rhythm. That's the way we breathe as followers of Christ. We love and we serve. They are connected. When we love, we find expression for it in service and acts of generosity and hospitality to others. When we engage in serving others, we seek to include them as family, as part of who we are and as part of and we love. We belong to one another. And so this whole series is just simply about learning and remembering to breathe and to breathe well and to be in that rhythm of loving and serving. As the church, we gather every once in a while, and we're gathering on Sunday morning. We gather sometimes on Tuesday or during the week. We gather together as a church. And as we gather together as a church, we kind of engage in breathing lessons together. <laughs> we learn how to breathe again. Because sometimes we get out of rhythm, right? We just kind of forget to breathe. And so we get together as a church every week, whenever we get together. And really what we're doing is just getting back in the rhythm of grace, back in the rhythm of God, back into our, our rhythm as followers of Christ. And then we're scattered. And the scattering is just as, as important as the gathering. The church is gathered, like today, but the church is also scattered. And it's scattered to all the places in which you and I go. It's scattered to all the organizations, to all the workplaces, to all the areas of our economy, to all the, the government services, to all the organizations, to all the families, to all the people, to all the people we're connected with. The church scatters by each one of us. And if you could imagine, if we could put up in a big screen or something and imagine all the connections that we each have in this city as we scatter. We have our connection here today. But imagine now as we're scattered during the week, all the, all the connections we have to this city and the people of this city. If we could diagram that, how far do you think it would go? I mean, it, it, 
It might go everywhere. I don't know. <laughs> it's possible that it could literally go everywhere. And, and that's the church gathered and scattered. The church is not just when we meet here. The church is you when you are living as, as loving and serving. When you're living with the heart of Jesus and seeing with the eyes of Jesus in your families, in your workplaces, in the places you volunteer, in, your, in where you shop, and how you, how you relate to others. When you're loving and serving in all of those places, we're being leaven in a loaf, we're being salt and light in the world, we're, we're continuing this breathing. So that's why this, serve, this series is so important to us. It's about loving and serving, serving and loving, being gathered and being scattered, and having the, the well-being of the whole city in mind, the well-being of everyone in the city in mind. We began by focusing upon the nurturing community of our city. In other words, all the places and ways in which human beings are nurtured to their full potential. Uh, families, friendships, uh, special organizations, churches, you know, wherever we are, social groups, and how we can love and serve people to their full potential in all those ways. In the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at the social community, which, which takes it a little bit more narrowly focused and asks and ask us to look at all persons and seeing them of equal value and sacred worth. Our social principle says, we affirm all persons as equally valuable in the sight of God. We affirm the sacred worth of all people. And so these last two weeks, we've been saying not only to love with the heart of Jesus, but see with the eyes of Jesus the sacred worth of everyone that we lay our eyes on. Last week, there was a passage of Scripture that was similar to this week's in many ways. There was a woman who came, and, and Jesus was at the house of eating a meal with the Pharisee who had invited him to come to dinner. And while he was at dinner, and as he reclined at dinner, there was a woman who came in and began to wipe his feet with the tears and her hair, and to anoint his feet with, with ointment. And the, and the Pharisee was quite indignant. If this man was a prophet, he would know that this woman was a sinner. Yet Jesus did not see her as a category, but saw her as a person, and he, he told a story about forgiveness, about debts that would be forgiving. And he asked them, and who would, who would uh, you know, respond more? Who would love more? The one who had 50, you know, 50 days wages forgiven or one who had 500 days wages forgiven? And the Pharisee said, well, the one of who has forgiven 500. And he says, so you're seeing testimony to that. Her response was gratitude, abundant gratitude. When Jesus sees you and Jesus sees me and we experience the, the forgiveness and the love and the acceptance and the belonging, our life responds with thanksgiving and praise. Others in the society saw her as a category, and last week we, we talked about trying to move from seeing people as categories and making judgments about those categories to seeing with the eyes of Jesus and seeing the sacred value and worth of everyone that we look upon and respond to. Today's reading is similar, isn't it? We have Zacchaeus, who also is uh, kind of uh, judged uh, unfairly, or maybe fairly, <laughs> by his contemporaries. He's quite wealthy. He is a chief tax collector. Now, you know, working for the IRS today is an honorable profession. Let me just say that. <laughs> but when you were the chief tax collector back then, and you were a, a Jew who, who was a chief tax collector, you were collecting taxes for the Romans, right? This foreign power in, in your, in around your area. And you were doing so, so you were, in essence, collecting the taxes and sending it to support the to support Rome and all of its, its religion and all of its, its ways. And while you're doing that, you're probably also taking a little bit for yourself. If he's a chief tax collector and rich, what they meant by... Often in the Bible, you ever notice it's tax collector and sinners? You ever notice that? <laughs> now again, if you're a tax collector today, that's not the case. But if you're a tax collector then, they often associated the two together because they felt you were betraying your people. You're collecting taxes from a foreign uh, you know, for an occupier, and often you are making yourself also rich in the process. So Zacchaeus is not one who is in good standing with his fellow uh, 
his, his folks. And he is kind of, again, someone who, who, is, who is seen as a category, as a tax collector and sinner, much as she was looked at as a prostitute and a sinner, whatever, right? He is looked at as a category, as a, as a tax collector and a sinner. And Jesus, but he's so anxious to see Jesus, being short of stature, he climbs a tree, and then Jesus invites himself over to his house. And in that invitation, uh, Zacchaeus welcomes Jesus into his house. He provides hospitality to Jesus. And he's so moved and so uh, overwhelmed by being seen by Jesus, by being, in a sense, honored by Jesus, by coming over to his house to, to say that he is motivated to do two things. One is to right the wrongs that he has committed against anyone and to be extravagantly generous. Jesus doesn't ask him to do either of those two things. He just came for dinner. But when you're seen, you're changed. When the woman last week was seen, she was changed to a life now of thanksgiving and gratitude and expressions of love. When Zacchaeus was changed, he, he sought to make things right. That he had, If he had defrauded anyone, he sought to make it right. And, and he went beyond that in trying to give away much that he has. There's nothing more powerful in our human experience than to be seen. This morning, those of us who were here, uh, Margie uh, shared a, a story that I shared a little bit, a similar story last week about someone being seen and the transformation that takes. She shared a couple of those stories this morning. People need food. People need shelter. People need, you know, help, legal help. <laughs> People need, we all have all kinds of needs, but one of our basic needs is to be seen and to know that it is safe to be seen and to know that we can be included. And, and when the woman was seen and when, Zac when Zacchaeus was seen, they were changed, and so are we. So the first part of this message, same as last week, Jesus sees you. No matter what your background is, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter whether you're proud or ashamed, whether you feel whole or guilty, or, or part, Jesus sees you. That's the gospel. And that's the good news <laughs> in a nutshell. God in Christ sees every one of us and still wants to come to dinner, uh, still wants to hang out <laughs> and be in our lives. And that is a message that all of us need to hear. We are seen. We are in the presence of Christ. And Christ invites us to be a part of his family. And when I am seen and we are seen, then we can't help but see others differently. Right? There's the connection. We then, too, begin to see others as Jesus sees us. And that changes our world. It changes our world. Belonging changes the world. God sent Jesus to reconcile all people to God and all people to one another. That's the central work of the cross, right? And that happens as we, as we reconstitute community, reconstitute family, reconstitute belonging, reconstitute being, which starts with being seen and being loved. And love then always serves and seeks to bind people together. So you are seen. I am seen. And we're called to, to see others in the same way that Jesus sees us. We have a call as followers of Christ to embody that simple message to everyone in this city. Right? Right? That's our call, that everyone might know the grace and love of God and be seen. I don't know what the population of Santa Rosa is. It's over 160,000, isn't it? That's just Santa Rosa. We are called to try and make sure that all of God's children, all of them, every one of them, knows and hears that message and experiences a sense of openness and belonging 
from those of us who follow Jesus. Are you overwhelmed yet? Absolutely. But, that, but that's, that's what it is. I'm seen. Now I'm a part of Christ's mission. Christ sees everyone. He doesn't just see the Methodists over here and the Lutherans over here and those who don't go to church over here and those who are out golfing over here and those who are... He sees us all with the same kind of eyes of love and of grace. And we who have been seen and went to, we are to do the same thing. Everyone. It's not enough for just us or just my family or just our church. And that is why when we see with the eyes of Jesus, we, we become desperate to find partners because we're not the only ones called to that. <laughs> Every other church in this community Every other organization that, that, that knows and that embraces the, the core value that every person is of sacred value and worth are our potential partners in embodying that message for our city. A city can't be whole. It can't function in any of its ways if, if that foundation is not really being, you know, if that's not the air we breathe. And so as we seek as a community to, to love and serve our city, we, we're looking to do, we're looking at the whole picture. And therefore, that's why it was so important for us to spend some such time this morning with, with those from Catholic Charities as an example of other partners that we have and we're looking to have who are with us, who God has also called to see all in our community. We need everyone and all one, <laughs> everyone who wants to be a part of that to do that. We have an outreach and service committee that really, commission that really helps us to form and, and, uh, and develop those partnerships. We're grateful for their work and the ways in which they have and continue to be and, and, and help us to kind of get ourselves connected and, and, and find those partners and, and, and work together on those kind of things. So you are seen, and as you're seen and as I'm seen, we see others differently, but we're called to see the whole. And that's so challenging that all we can do is offer, as, as Marty said this morning, all we can offer is our few fish and our few crumbs and, and know that God will multiply that as we find partners in doing that. The other thing I want to say is this, is that as we see one another and as we offer belonging and acceptance and safe places to be seen, we become brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, right? Sons and daughters. We become a family. And when you're in a, a family, uh, the service doesn't go one way, hopefully, if you're in a healthy family. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It doesn't go one way. If it goes, if, if we're serving and it's going one way, it might mean that we're not quite loving yet. And we need to love more. Because when you're loving and serving, it goes every which way. God uses each one of us to meet each of our needs. Some of our needs are material. Some of our needs are spiritual. Right? Some of our needs are concrete. Some of them are emotional. Some of them are purposeful. God uses all of us to meet our needs. So as, as Jesus sees Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus then responds in, in not only making uh, things right with those he's wrong, but he responds also in great generosity. He becomes a part of Jesus' mission to do just that, to see people differently. He becomes a part of the loving and serving. It goes both ways. When we bring in and when we, we make new connections and new family members, so to speak, we, they become part of the mission as well. They become a part of the loving and serving. And we receive as much as we offer. I remember when I was, uh, I think I was 17, I've told you some of you this story before. When I was 17, I was in a, a small group and it changed my life. Uh, I was the youngest, and there was uh, a couple in their 20s, another one in their, I think a single woman in their 30s or 40s, and another couple in their 50s, and a couple in their 80s. It was a, had the whole spectrum of lifespan in that little group. And I received so much from them, right? Their experience, their just interest in my life, uh, letting me feel like I belonged. You know what I'm saying? It was so important to a 17-year-old who's trying to figure out his identity to, to feel like I have a sense of belonging, and not only with my peers, but with, 
with the larger family, right? Cross generations. So important to have a sense of belonging to that. But you know what also transformed me maybe as much? Is that they were so appreciative of what they said I was offering to them in that group as well. Me, a 17-year-old, inexperienced person searching for his identity, what did I have to offer these experienced, you know, uh, wonderful Christian people? But they received from me as well as gave so much to me. I became a part of this loving and serving, serving and loving. That's what it looks like. That's what Zacchaeus is doing as he is seen by God. We have made reference to our oneness in Christ's statement these past two weeks because it's so directly related to our social community. Our oneness in Christ's statement that's on our bulletin, you know, uh, every, 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 every week in our English speaking, in our English language services is a statement that, that basically says we see everyone and we want to see everyone as of, as of sacred worth and of, as of valuable in God's sight. And so that is our that is our value. That's one of our core values as a people of faith. And one of the things that I have really appreciated about the conversation we've had about that statement over the past uh, months is that everyone I talk to, we are reaffirming that this statement is a core value that we hold together. We really want to be and see people as Jesus sees them and to be a welcoming, a welcoming place, however we can However we can do that, it makes that visible. And so we continue to breathe. We continue to love and to serve. We continue to love with the heart of Jesus, to see with the eyes of Jesus, and as we do to reform family, to reform community, and to both give and receive from those to whom God has joined us together. Throughout this series, we've asked you to take one of these little booklets. It says, Love and Serve the City. If you don't have one, there are those as you leave today. For we're going to go from different parts of our city throughout this series. And as we, as we do, there's a place in this little booklet each, for each of, the, each of the weeks to kind of uh, make a commitment uh, to do some act of service or become more informed in some way to serve the city. And there's a chance to reflect on that, is how does that service help you become more like Christ? And then the last one is, is as we leave that uh, emphasis and go to another one, is to ask yourself the question, how can I continue to be in ministry with Christ in the world in this area? So every couple of weeks, we'd like you to kind of, as we're doing the social sphere of the city now, to kind of take some time today or later today and consider what you've been able to, how you've connected this last couple of weeks and what you've learned and how you have sensed a, a rhythm of loving and serving and what that's meant to you in terms of your connection to Christ. And then to ask yourself, is there anything that I want to continue to do as you move forward? And make a commitment to yourself to do that there. Throughout the series, we'll kind of work through this together as a way of saying, here's my experience, here's my reflection on that, now what can I commit to do as we go forward. We're learning lots of ways uh, to do that. All we want to do is love with the heart of Christ and serve with the eyes of Christ and see with the eyes of Christ and to let everyone know that Jesus sees them. God, help us to see ourselves as you see us. Help us to see others <laughs> as we have been seen. And Lord, send us partners. Help us to find linkages. Help us to find every linkage that we need to do what you call us all to do. And that is to announce the good news that we all belong to you. We ask and pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
It's not a tree to climb up here, but, um, <laughs> but let's take this opportunity to enter into this time of communion, remembering especially that on this World Communion Sunday that we are indeed called to be one in Christ. That is that the body of Christ unifies us regardless of our creed, wherever we are in our lives, on our own journey of faith, however we have come Today, indeed, we have come to be one in Christ. And so we pray together a prayer of thanksgiving. And we say, Creator God, Creator God, you who brought forth all life, we give you 
thanks. We give you thanks and praise. We thank you for the gifts we have received, the few loaves and fishes we have returned to your service. May it be a recommitment, a reminder of our covenant that as we have received love from you, we are, we are called to serve. We give you thanks for those and all good gifts, and we give you thanks for the gifts of this table, grain from the field, fruit of the vine, work of human hands unjustly paid. And we remember, we remember that those laborers and their families are yet anticipating the kingdom of God, and they are here present at this table. Who else is here at this table with us? Our saints gone on before us, those we love but no longer see. Let us say their names out loud. Bob Ryan. Philomoni Rayawa. Daryl and Vivian Mark. Danielle Kaufman. Bob Rapp. We remember those saints gone on before us as the eyes of Christ behold us. The hands of God hold the beloved who have already ascended. We celebrate this meal in anticipation of life with them in the world to come. Amen. Jesus came for a last dinner. He was with his friends, even the ones who would betray him, all of them who would fail him. And he saw their fear. He saw their betrayal coming. He saw everything that they were, and he took the bread. And he gave it to them, and he said, Tauro ka kania, this is my body. This is my body, and it will be given for you and for this whole world. Whenever you eat this, do this in remembrance of me. And then... After the meal was ended, he took the cup. He gave thanks to God, and then he gave the cup to his friends, and he said, Moda ogunu keve kina. Take, drink, all of you. This is my blood, and it will be shed because of my deep, deep love for this world. Whoever you are, wherever you come from, take and drink this. This is love poured out for you. And so we remember, we remember the mighty acts of God. We remember the small acts of God. We remember everything that God has done, is doing, and will do. And we give thanks as we remember that the mystery of our faith is that Christ has died. Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Let us pray together. Lord, Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts, these gifts of the field and gifts of the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Beloved, especially today, it is important to remember that this is not the table of the United Methodist Church. This is not the table of any church. Actually, this is God's table. And so all people are welcome here. You are welcome here regardless of your race, your age, your sexual orientation, your gender identity, your housing status, your immigration status, any category human beings have put you into and tried to use to shut you out. That is not what Jesus sees. Jesus sees you with the eyes of Christ and sees you as someone who is deeply of sacred worth. 
And Jesus sees that although we are many, we are one because we partake of one loaf. May this be a sharing in the body of Christ. And although we are many, we are one because we partake of one cup. This is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Well, if there be no impediment to your receiving communion, our table is open, our body of Christ is gluten-free, and our cup is non-alcoholic. In the United Methodist Church, we take through the process of intinction, take a piece of bread, dip it into the cup. It has been given freely, and so freely you shall receive. I'd like to invite the communion servers forward.
afternoon service, let me on behalf of the language ministry leadership thank everyone here today, the pastors, the chancel choir, and the director, ladies and gentlemen, for being here today. For the people that have pro provided the accompaniment to the music, which uh, is new for us, it added some flavor to a cappella. <laughs> And uh, thank you very much indeed. <coughs> By the way, there is a refreshment provided after this in the fellowship hall. I'll call it what you may, lunch or feast. But uh, hope to see everyone there. And uh, that's the end of the day for us. <laughs> for, for the last hymn, let's uh, join the choir. Let's raise as you may and sing the last hymn for tonight and ask uh, Pastor Blake for the benediction after that. Their hand there. Amen. <laughs> Praise God for that. Before the blessing, one uh, final announcement. Uh, it was made in Fijian, so I think I'll tell you what it was. There is a Bible study that will be going on this week, and Pastor Lindsay and I will be there to 
to be with uh, many of our Fijian members, and, but you're also welcome. It's at 9 p.m. Monday through uh, this week, and you're welcome to join us at 9 p.m. Uh, for the Bible study this week. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Thanks be to God.